you're uh, referencing an interesting study that uh, was recently published in the uh, BMC Rheumatology, which basically portrayed uh, in the television and in, um, in fictional characters, uh, patients and people that have gout. And you know what the study st stated was that 61% of the patients or the cases that they uh, looked at were due to this overindulgence of food or drink uh, and only about 12% that actually referenced a, a medical condition or a biological cause. And this is interesting because traditionally in these uh, media settings uh, and on television, the gout is really depicted based on uh, gluttony, based on overindulgence, uh, depending on the setting of the uh, show, it might be medieval times uh, say, but even in more recent uh, kind of contemporary shows, uh, gout is used as, as something that explain why a character couldn't come to work on time or why a character uh, was um, doing something where they uh, weren't showing up to a, an appointment or something like that. Um, and I think that's pretty interesting uh, because they're probably using this for humor. Uh, and that's probably why this keeps coming up in the uh, television shows and uh, in these types of outlets. But that's really uh, difficult um, for us as clinicians uh, to try to help these patients because uh, the creation of humor in these shows really almost reflects badly on patients that are dealing with this uh, on a daily basis or, or in life. Basically, uh, we have to do a better job as, uh, as clinicians and as educators uh, we really need to try to change that stigma that, you know, gout is not uh, a humorous disease. Uh, it's in fact a, a systemic disease. It's one that needs to be treated just like hypertension or high cholesterol uh, or uh, some of our other diseases that really are a genetic problem. They're, you're born with this. It's not just the choices that you make. Yes, you know, sometimes the choices can exacerbate these things, but just like hypertension, uh, we don't depict these, uh, these patients as uh, being humorous or, or belittling them because they have high blood pressure or high cholesterol. So essentially, you know, we need to change this perception. Uh, we as educators need to educate our patients. Uh, maybe we as rheumatologists need to educate our primary care physicians uh, that this is a, is a real problem, a systemic problem that needs to be treated like any other chronic disease. Yeah, so there's a lot of implications on this. And basically it, it revolves around how quickly we can care for our patients. Um, you know, the implications if, if a patient feels that they're going to be uh, belittled or they're going to be yelled at. Um, you know, I use the example with my patients of smoking. You know, a patient doesn't wanna, wanna tell us that they're smoking because they're afraid that their doctor one more time is going to tell them they have to quit. Well, if a patient comes in you know, because they have a gout flare, uh, they feel like based on what they've seen in the media and, and amongst their friends that if I go into my doctor and I say, I have a gout flare, that they're gonna look at me like I just had a big uh, uh, steak and lobster dinner and, and binge drinking and, and that that's going to be something that they're gonna look down upon. When that's really not the case, that's, that's not what this is. This is uh, a flare of a chronic disease that really needs to be managed on a daily basis. So these patients, you know, they push off seeking care until it just gets to that breaking point where they can't um, work, they can't uh, function in life, they miss social events, and they finally, you know, sort of tail between their legs come in uh, to seek care. And that's not, that's not healthy, and that's not what we want to see from our patients. Well, the urgency comes because of the long-term outcomes from untreated gout. Uh, it's not a uh, specific joint disease, it's a systemic disease. So over time, you see a lot of chronic inflammation, you see a lot of exacerbations of other diseases um, like hypertension and diabetes in these patients that can be very complicated. Um, and basically it, uh, it delays care. So it's imperative that we, we see these patients and we offer them the medications that we have out there. We have a number of medications that we can use now to treat gout. Some of these are oral daily medications uh, that are often where we start, uh, but then 
you know, trying to find those refractory cases so that we can be more aggressive with even IV medications uh, that we have uh, available for patients. Um, one thing that, that I think uh, to tell all of my colleagues out there and others, you know, that the rheumatologists, you know, we really need to be educators here for our patients and for our other colleagues. I think it's really important uh, that uh, we educate uh, and we let people know that this is a treatable disease. Um, I think that there's been a lot of research, a lot of science that's been going on in the last couple of years. Um, I was lucky enough to be a part of a study that, uh, that used an IV medication uh, uh, called Peglodocase for these most refractory patients. And you know, we found ways to make this better, to work better um, with using other medications. And these are the kind of uh, research things that are still going on, uh, making the patient experience better, making the medications easier to tolerate, um, and really preventing all of those uh, long-term damage uh, things that occur with gout, the erosions, the damage of joints, the dysfunction, the uh, uh, loss of work and, and social events. And so I think um, maybe just adding to the education and really looking out there for other options for patients is, uh, is my take home message uh, for other rheumatologists out there and, uh, and primary care providers alike. And maybe for the patients, you know, don't be afraid to talk about gout uh, to your primary care provider. And, and in particularly times when you're not flaring, uh, when, when patients are not hurting so that we can prevent this from happening in the future.